Hello on this Monday, I'm meteorologist Brian Carstens, and thank you for watching this latest edition of Weather or Not. Scott Mund is off today. He'll actually be off the next couple of days, giving him a chance to rest up and wish him the best, and he'll join us again on Wednesday. So this week in weather, of course, we're going to talk about thunderstorms, and I'm sure that's a topic that uh, kind of comes with mixed reviews now, doesn't it? With, of course, everything that's been going on the past week to 10 days with severe weather in the, the northern plains. I'm going to give you an upfront forecast on what's happening here the next uh, 24 hours. And today's weather, we've been following temperatures recovering back into the 70s in Sioux Falls. So another day this afternoon where things are feeling pretty nice. But to the west, it's heating up. We're Close to 90 today in Rapid City, and we're gearing up for some storms in western South Dakota. There's a chance this evening of that. If those fail to materialize, then there's more action coming here late tonight and tomorrow. In fact, we feel pretty confident that uh, some of those storms in the far northwest will be strong to severe, with large hail and damaging winds a possibility. And that's going to set us up for some more active conditions going into Tuesday. And my best advice to you as we walk through the pieces of the forecast is watch each day. Of course, we know that, you know, one day is going to lead into the parameters of the next, and it's going to keep us active at times, it looks like. You can already see that on Futurecast here with those showers and storms in western South Dakota, some of which could move east here during the day tomorrow, but then more likely a scenario tomorrow night that will likely pan out for some additional weather. So uh, my best advice, again, is watching the forecast as we go through time, and it's probably going to be a pretty active week, at least for parts of the week. Stay with us. You're watching Weather or Not, and we will be right back. Hello and welcome back to this latest edition of Weather or Not. I'm meteorologist Brian Karstens. We're watching the weather this week. Of course, the potential for more thunderstorms. Speaking of which, we had a few of those around the region during the course of the weekend. And I thought we'd begin this segment with a recap of how thunderstorms have been tracking. You can see there across eastern and central South Dakota, various spots where the rains have been locally heavier, in particular a couple of segments west of Aberdeen, also near and northwest of Chamberlain last night. We had some locally heavy rain with some reports of uh, flash flooding and uh, that affecting southeastern Lyman County. Also some heavy rain again falling northwest of Yankton. I know that number doesn't look too impressive, but there have been some locally or much heavier rains over the course of the weekend. And this is actually a better Way of looking at that, you can see the weekend rain totals and the area shaded in red or orange and yellow, indicating where we've had those heaviest uh, spots. In particular, just north of Huron, we have had some pretty hefty rains. Looks like locally in excess of three inches of rainfall. Sioux Falls proper, not really getting much of that. The storms have stayed primarily just a little bit to the west, but... It's a new week, and uh, as you know, things will be changing as we likely will get some more storms in the forecast. Now, I do want to mention quickly another subject that's come up quite a bit in the last uh, couple of days, and that's the issue of smoke in the skies. And we've been dealing with some of that. I would argue that the worst of the smoke has actually been to our east the last uh, couple of days, but certainly at times we've had A lot of haze here, and we're still dealing with some of that coming back in from the south. But I would argue that probably for us is maybe a decreasing trend, hopefully, as uh, the weather patterns begin to change. But unfortunately, that's not all good news because we're talking about then the heat and humidity returning, which I know is not exactly everybody's favorite subject. Some of you like that, others not so much. So coming up... We're going to look at where that's going. We're also going to talk about the Storm Prediction Center outlooks and then also our take on that. So as we look through the rest of the week, what severe weather could bring, stay with us. Welcome back. As we watch the weather forecast this week, I know many of you are wondering about what is going to happen with the chance of severe weather. And that's kind of a touchy subject, obviously, with all the uh, weather we've had over the last several days 
and storms. The last subject we want to bring up is more severe weather, but we do want to at least address some of those issues in the forecast. So here we go. This is the outlook for the next 24 hours. Primarily, the focus is western South Dakota. The reason for that is the fact that the heat and the instability is greatest here, and that's also in conjunction with an upper air disturbance is moving along. And so western South Dakota will continue to have some uh, chances of severe weather. It's not necessarily all uh, late this afternoon or this evening, however. Some of this could easily form late tonight, uh, depending on how the uh, disturbances roll in from the northwest. So I think there's a conditional risk even overnight of some hail with some of these storms here. And you'll notice that that does not include Sioux Falls. The Sioux Falls area and our East River counties are primarily excluded from that because we're not dealing with the rich environment yet for storms. We don't have the excessive heat and humidity, and plus the other uh, parameters are not as high. Tomorrow, the risk map shifts a little bit. The focus is primarily into north central and northwestern South Dakota. Now, a couple of different scenarios that play out here. First of all, in the morning, there could easily be some thunderstorm action crossing through this region. And I will pass along that the possibility is there for Sioux Falls as we're organizing our latest forecast. We think some of that action could move east of the James Valley. I think most of it would probably be weakening or it's definitely running into less instability as it moves east. But then we'll kind of need to refocus our attention into northwestern South Dakota later tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night as storms will likely move to the southeast. Now, that's going to, of course, have bearings on how we transition into day three, which is also in the outlook. And the Storm Prediction Center has kind of broad brushed us with this marginal risk map. Again, right now, it looks like Sioux Falls and pretty much that southeastern third of Kettleland is included at this point in time. I'm not right now going to nail down a specific scenario there, although I would have uh, some thoughts here to, what, into Wednesday night of some storms coming in from the west. But again, that's going to hinge on how these things develop the next two days. So every day gets to be a little bit more tricky. But we do feel pretty confident that the heat and the humidity will be increasing throughout that period of time. And so what is a marginal risk today could easily become a slight risk or something more. Okay, so I do want to caution you that these outlooks uh, do tend to ramp up as time goes on. One other thought here, and this is going way out toward the end of the week. We're right now looking at a weather map for Friday. So the Storm Prediction Center felt confident enough to put out a day five, and that is more significant because it means that the parameters, not only just with the heat and the instability, but also the upper air concerns are definitely there to support some strong to severe thunderstorm development. My question would be how long and how strong the cap will be, because I do feel very confident that the atmosphere will eventually cap off uh, probably after whatever forms on Wednesday. So we get into Thursday, probably most of Friday, it's going to be too warm to storm. Okay, so I want to make sure we're clear about that. So a lot of this outlook would be Friday night, and then there's probably some sort of story in here for Saturday. So on a Monday, I'm just giving you our first thoughts on this. Um, But I definitely would be more concerned about this time period because once you start to integrate strong upper air dynamics, which is the jet stream and some of the, the winds that tend to prop up these storms, and then you overlay that with extreme heat and humidity, which I have no question our heat index later this week is probably going to get to 100 degrees or more, then that's that concoction that gets to be tricky. And uh, we don't need to worry about it, but we just need to keep an eye on it. That's my best advice on that scenario as we head toward the end of the week. All right, well, speaking of the end of the week and the big picture, we're going to take a look at those weather patterns for the rest of Kettleland. That's coming up, so stay with us. Welcome back to Weather or Not. I'm meteorologist Brian Karstens. All right, let's dig into the forecast and uh, more particulars as we go through the week. First subject, the dew point. The feels like temperature will be, yeah, getting more like summer heat and humidity should be. We had a nice break over the weekend, 
My uh, hope is you enjoyed that because uh, it's not going to stick around, is it? Dew point forecasts already today are starting to recover. East River primarily back to some 60s. You're noticing uh, the numbers in Sioux Falls, probably not much more than 63 or 64. Tomorrow, though, those numbers are higher, and that feeds into that severe weather risk map that we just showed you. So also with a prevalent southeasterly wind, that should also aid that moisture pooling that's occurring in central South Dakota. So we see a couple of dew points close to 70 around Pier and Winter. So we'll take note of that. Sioux Falls area, we're going up the scale. We're not quite there to the high levels yet, but... Wednesday, we increase another notch, and that's where I would say at this point, uh, any storms that are around either in the morning or later in the day, we also need to be mindful of locally heavy rainfall. Uh, That's a subject I briefly touched on this morning uh, during Kettleland this morning in our morning broadcast, but it's another topic that I want to bring up uh, during this discussion as well, that we could have those locally heavy rainfall amounts Certainly, the humidity is not going anywhere on Thursday. Look at that. Widespread 70s for dew points in eastern South Dakota, much of western Minnesota. And when you get dew points in the mid-70s, yeah, it's right back into that really high range. And, of course, it's going to prop up our heat index values as well. And Friday and Saturday, well, here we go. Now we're back to even these kind of numbers. Look at that. Close to 80 for a dew point. And if we get to those levels, that gets us right back into the thick of where we were here last week. And that's not a good sign because then we got to reconcile a cold front. Watch what starts happening on Saturday. Look at the big drop on the dew points in western South Dakota. That is going to come in to uh, the region, and there is going to be a battle zone in there. So when you see those kind of contrasting numbers, that should be a clue that uh, things are going to be uh, definitely more volatile there in the extended forecast. That juicy air reflects on this instability map. This is one that we typically show that shows the fuel for thunderstorms. It's only one ingredient. It doesn't mean that it's just going to be storming all the time. That's not the case at all. What it does show us is, 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 at least in my view, is that we've got the heat, we've got the humidity, so storms that do sprout connected to this air mass can produce some, obviously, some large hail, for one thing, because you're vaulting those updrafts really high when you have that kind of cape or what we call convective available potential energy. That's a scientific phrase for what this product is called, and it plays out uh, really into that day five outlook that the Storm Prediction Center put out. That is uh, a a very highly capped environment. There's a big lid over the top of us on Friday. But once you break that lid, that's when the problems start. And uh, some of that could easily happen Friday night. And here's a scenario. So let's let's say, just for argument's sake, that that doesn't happen as much or we get scraped by it on Friday. Well, then you got Saturday, and you're right back in the thick of it again. So I would be very careful how... We kind of go about this on Friday, Saturday. You're going to hear some outlooks. I expect there are going to be some positional changes on those. I think uh, right now it's fair game to say uh, there could easily be severe weather for parts of our region Friday, and maybe we shift that focus into the southeast on Saturday based on the latest timeline that we see here. And we're going to be monitoring that if anything slows down you bet. We'll be on top of it here in the Storm Center and let you know more because I know you got a lot of weekend plans and uh, that would directly impact some of that if those trends continue. So what's driving all of this? Well, the heat ridge here across the midsection of the country is obviously a big player. And uh, these storms, again, the precipitation forecasts are driving some of these storms in from the west, northwest. There's an example for Wednesday night. It kind of coats the southeast. with Again, that would be a storm line that could easily run nocturnally and uh, run into some heat and humidity. So these are the kind of scenarios that... Keep us on our toes, but look at the big low up there in Canada by Friday. That's substantial. That's a big deal. When you got that much upper air support, you can easily run some storms through our region. So, again, my caution to you is just keep an eye on the weather this week. 
We're going to have more discussions on this program and the rest of our Kettleland News shows as well as we go throughout the week. All right, well, that is the very latest here from the Storm Center. Of course, we're going to be on top of the weather all week long. We thank you for watching our program today. Scott will be gone again tomorrow. I will be with you then. Until then, thanks for watching and have a good day.